You might be looking at the title of this video and you're saying, this is part of the 30 days of The Undertaker video series? And I thought you were doing 30 videos about The Undertaker in 30 days. Well, let's be clear here. That is a lot to ask, to truly come up with 30 unique topics to talk about one wrestler, one individual over the course of a 30-day month. So there's that. But then there's also a piece of, you know, talking about some other people that are in some ways related to The Undertaker can still tie into The Undertaker, and that is totally acceptable, totally within the rules. And when you think about people that you most closely associate with The Undertaker, I think beyond question, you go with two. Number one is Paul Bear. And the last video in this series was about him and just how truly underappreciated I think he is as a WWF slash E manager and frankly as a pro wrestling manager. And I think his place amongst the all-time greats is much lower than it really should be just based off of when you hear a lot of people talk about greatest managers ever when you see lists on social media and on the internet about greatest managers ever. Percy Pringle, Paul Bearer, never gets the love that I think he deserves. And similarly, with the second person, the second character you obviously most closely associate with The Undertaker, and some, for some it might actually be the first, but either way, it's either one or two. It's Kane! It's got to be Kane! And, and that, of course, is absolutely correct. And I think similarly with Paul Bearer, that Kane's greatness truly gets underrated and underappreciated. Now, that's not saying anybody sits there and says, oh, Kane's not a Hall of Famer, Kane's not a great... No, 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 no. I think everybody pretty much understands that, accepts that, espouses that, believes that, and that's great. Like, it's one of those things we can generally agree on, even if you weren't the biggest fan of the Kane character and gimmick over the years. But I think when you look at his importance to the company, and just how significant he was, and just how really damn good he was, I do think that he ends up being incredibly underrated in the grand scheme of things when you talk about greatest superstars of all time. Now, certainly, he's not going to be at the very, very top. Like, he's not in the top three, top five. He's not even in the top ten. But when you start thinking about it, like, when you talk about impact, significance, longevity, contributions. Now you start thinking top 20, top 25 guy in that company all time. And I don't think I'm being that crazy when I say that. Am I? I don't think so. Because this was a guy, when you think about Kane, this was a guy that you had over the course of two plus decades, two plus decades, in notable kind of marquee main event, semi-main event, upper mid-card, mid-card type of spots, like consistently, consistently. I mean, just look at the business him and Taker did over the years just between themselves. Like when Kane came into the fold in 1997, late in that year, you know, this is Glenn Jacobs, you're talking about a guy that had been fake diesel before that, and then before that was Isaac Yankum. So he had gotten some real stinkers of gimmicks. Like this was, you know, third time's the charm, I guess. It's the last real chance at romance, and by God, did he make the most off of it. And coming off of the business that Taker had done in 96 with Mankind going into 97 and the business he had done uh, with guys like Brett and you know, Sean and so forth, like you're looking at this, and now you bring Kane into the fold. And my goodness, man, like perfect timing, just perfect storm of everything. And to me, you know, we look back at some periods of time of Taker being his absolute best. It's that run with Kane as rivals, as teammates, as the Brothers of Destruction and all the stuff that they did during the Monday Night Wars, during the Attitude Era. These are some of the best times of The Undertaker's career. And there is no question, no doubt, that Kane is not just a small, but a sizable contributing factor to that. And when you really think about Kane, again, you're talking about over two plus decades in a consistent spot. And I think what's happened over the years is Kane got overexposed. 
Cain got used too much. Cain almost got kind of that big showitis of too many heel face, heel face, heel face turns. Got jobbed out too much, lost to too many people that he maybe shouldn't have, didn't get protected well enough. I got to the point where you were getting diminishing returns out of them because of the things they were doing from a booking standpoint. But even in that case, you're looking at a guy like Glenn Jacobs and Kane, you know, that you could clearly see cared about the business, respected the business, cared about the future, cared about others, cared about being the best team player that he could be, you know, going along with the story and helping others get over and helping them make more money, which would help make him more money, which would help make everybody more money. Like when you think about some of these guys that we really look up to in terms of their wrestling careers and who we really, really respect, like lots of people love Austin. Understandable. But was it the best at, you know, helping others along? Like he was a, for all the crap that Hogan gets rightfully so about politics, like Austin was every bit as bad if not worse. Because at least with Ho Hogan, you could say, there is a, I'm putting over a Sting, I'm putting over a Goldberg, I'm putting over a Luger, I'm putting over Warrior. Like, you really don't have that much of that with Austin, like realistically. And you think about the Bretts and the Shawns of the world, like whichever side of the fence you land on with one of those guys or both of those guys, you know, they had their selfish ways about them, and they weren't always the best about looking out for others and looking out for the company as a whole and always doing what was best for business. It was what was best for them because they were seemed to be raging marks for themselves. But it's guys like Mark Calloway, The Undertaker. It's guys like Chris Jericho. It's guys like Kane, Glenn Jacobs. It's guys like Mick Foley. It's those guys that you look at that in terms of wrestling, staying away from any politics or anything, this is kind of irrelevant to this conversation here at least, when you talk about wrestling and the fact that these guys would work with others, these guys would make others better, these guys stayed for an extremely long period of time in some cases. I didn't realize Mick Foley's run wasn't the longest, but damn, it was really freaking good. And he helped along a lot of people along the way. Like he helped to revitalize The Undertaker's career. He helped make Triple H. He helped make The Rock. Like when you look at mankind, like Mick Foley, like there's a reason a lot of people respect him as much as they do. And I think Kane belongs in that similar type of ilk that similar type of stratosphere for the guy that would put over people, the guy that would work with young talent, the guy that would do what was best for business, you know, like sometimes to his detriment, like I will never forgive this company, the WWE. I will never forgive them during God's reign of terror in 2003, you know, that 2002, 2003, even to going into 2004 timeframe. It was really a reign of terror. It absolutely, totally and completely was. And when they unmasked Kane, I believe that was around the summer of 2003, wasn't it? And my timing might be a little off. I'm an old man now. Forgive me, please. But when they had him be unmasked, the fact that they took Kane's mask from him, but then didn't put the World Heavyweight Championship on him all these years later still absolutely pisses me the hell off. And while, sure, maybe Glenn Jacobs wanted to take the mask off because he's like, I want people to see my face. I want to do something different with the character. And I understand that and I appreciate that. Like, he deserved more. There were times over the years that I felt that this company missed the boat with Kane and should have made him a champion more than they actually did. It's why the year that he won Money in the Bank and he ended up cashing in. That's why so many people were really excited about it because it was one of those things like, this is a guy that's been around a long time. He's given a lot. Like, he's deserved more of this shine and more of this opportunity. While I understand he was never going to be the money level draw of somebody like an Austin or The Rock or even to a degree of The Undertaker. Like... You can't pretend that Kane drew no ratings. You can't pretend like Kane didn't draw any money. If he didn't do that, he wouldn't have been around all those years. So I even think sometimes the way WWE has treated him over the years shows just how underrated and underappreciated and how sometimes taken for granted he really is. And we really get skewed here by the last few years of Kane's career as to the point of, oh, God, it's Kane, and oh, God. 
Like, we gotta do this again. Oh god, this is so old. And, and it's really skewed our perceptions of him. It's skewed how we view him, I think, in some ways from a historical lens. And that's a real shame. And I feel like that's a reality, but it is a real shame. Because here's a guy, you know, that was in the middle of so many great things during the Attitude Era, both as a singles guy, as a brother of Taker, as a rival opponent of Taker. You know, here's a guy that you could talk about, you know, so there's numerous memories in the Attitude Era, and po slightly post-after Attitude Era. Several memorable moments from Kane, especially when he made the big spectacular returns. Like, when Kane, Kane's one of those guys, when he made an entrance, like, he made an entrance! I mean, like, you just think about all the storylines and all the programs that even worked over the years, like, I mean, here was a guy that had the ability to go face. There's a guy that had the ability to go heel. You know, you could argue some of the best work of his entire career came later in his career as part of Team Hell No with Daniel Bryan. Like, as great as Daniel Bryan was in that kind of Owen Hart type of role, and I always felt like that was the turn that he needed. And I talked about it, if you remember, years back then, about how Daniel Bryan needed to take that Owen Hart turn to become, you know, a main eventer for WWE, like a legitimate one, not a forced one. That dynamic doesn't work without Kane. That turn for Daniel Bryan doesn't work without Kane. It's Kane the straight man that makes it work. It's Kane that's the one that everything played off of. It's Kane that made that go. And when you just think back over the course of the length of it, the entirety of his career, like I said, this is a guy that now, I really think is underrated and vastly underappreciated, similar to the Big Show. They become victims of their own success and longevity to a degree because they get overused. And they get overly leveraged. And you end up diminishing the appeal and, and the mystique of them, which is a real shame because that should never have happened with a guy like Kane. Like Kane's the type of guy that would have been perfectly suited for a territorial system. Um, because you could have had him do a run for six months for a year and then go other places for three or four years, come back, and always stay fresh and always be a big deal somewhere. And you could throw him up against different opponents and everything else. Business changed. So in some ways, the structure and reality of the current wrestling business over the past 20 years it kind of handicapped him a little bit. But you know, when you think about all that he did as a tag team guy, when you think about all of the feuds and rivalries that he's been in over the years that we remember, and it's not just always The Undertaker, but certainly Undertaker is a very memorable one indeed. Like, damn, this dude has given a lot to the company. He's meant a lot to the company. And when you look at that longevity, and you talk about the Royal Rumble records, you know, for the longest time, he's the one that held the record for most eliminations in a single Rumble. I believe he still has the record for most career eliminations. Like, you know, this dude's done a lot in his time. And I just think personally that his greatness and his value is at least underappreciated in part because of what happened the last few years. But I think in a lot of ways, it's actually very, very underrated. So I'm curious to hear from you guys what you think about Kane, like where you would put him in the ranks of all-time WWE wrestlers. Am I off the mark here or am I kind of on the mark that the work at the very, very tail end of his career has really diminished the perspective or view of just how great Kane was during his two decades plus long career for WWE?